Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Elevating Your Life. Paula Vale here. Another great show. Oh my gosh, it just, what a year we are having. I am so grateful to share with everyone today, Cynthia Hay. She is a chiropractor and a certified fitness trainer in practice for over 22 years. She specializes in low force adjusting and in low impact training. Earlier in her career, while her husband was in active duty in the US Air Force, she practiced in the states of Nevada, California, Kansas, and Virginia. When he retired from military service, they settled permanently in her home state of New York, where she continues to practice. Her book, Soft Health, is her first nonfiction book However, she has authored two previous works and she's gonna mention those. But first off, I'm going to say I absolutely adored this book. It had so many fascinating, wonderful tips and topics. Cynthia, thank you. And thank you for being on the show today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Paula. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm just so happy we met and can share the, you know, a wellness mission together. Your book is fantastic. So Thank first, you. you're welcome. First, I'm going to ask you what, what triggered you to write this book? What put that in motion for you? It was a combination of several things that came together. Um, first of all, there was a background, which is that I am an avid reader and I've for enjoyment and professional growth, I do read self-help and I read about nutrition and I read about fitness all on my own. And when there's a book that has impacted me a lot, I'll make like my own little cliff notes for the book. So I've been for storing these little cliff notes in my computer for years. So that was kind of like a germinating phase. I didn't know that it would become another book, but it was something that I was doing. And I thought maybe there will be another use for these, but I would review them from time to time. And then I happen to love podcasts and that's another joy of being on yours, but I do love podcasts. And there was one that I was listening to, to and they said, what is your elevator pitch? What is it that you do that you can summarize it fairly quickly for people? And I realized, wow, I, I, I should think about that. And when I thought about it more, I came up with the, I, I really do practice soft health, meaning that I don't like extremes. For me, that it just doesn't work well. It rubs me wrong. I know for some people it works. I'm not saying it doesn't work for some people, but for me, it never did. And my, my way of adjusting is gentle. I do low force. It's with an instrument called an activator. It's gentle and relaxing. When I work out, it's low impact. I, I don't lift to the max. I don't kill myself. I'm just consistent about it. And so I thought about these things and I'm like, yeah, I'm not an extremist. I don't like harsh things. I soft health, <laughs> just because that's how I could describe it. And then once I defined it, these other books that I wrote year, like the summaries that I had written years ago started kind of coming together and things that I've told patients over the years all started coming together in my mind. And then I just, then I was just inspired to, to write this book called soft health. <laughs> I love it. And that's a great title. It's so great. And I mean, I made so many notes and so many topics were just so elevating for me. And, you know, I'll, I'll start with one that was really, really caught me. And that's how, you know, just our everyday household duties can keep us healthier. I've, I've always believed, you know, being the ever ready bunny that I am and my years of restaurant work, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm getting exercise. I'm, yes. you know, I'm working on my health. So yeah, that was great. You talked about that. Describe that a little more for us, if you would. Yeah. A lot of times, just like you said, it's about a mindset. So if your mindset is that the chores are opportunities for steps, then laziness just goes out the window. Cause it's like, no, this is an opportunity. Oh, the dog has to go out. Oh, I'll do it. <laughs> do you want a glass of water? Oh, I'll get it, honey. You know, any little thing, if you're the one that jumps up and does it, 
you're getting extra steps. So it's, it's an opportunity if you look at it that way. So chores can have a, a real positive side. <laughs> you're going up and down the stairs to do laundry. You forget something in the other room. Okay, fine. It's good to get up and go to the other room. It's not, it's not a rolling the eyes. It's like, okay, great. I more steps. <laughs> yes. And when we realize that and think about that, that really can make us feel better, can it? Make us happier. My gosh, I'm also taking care of my body and doing something for my body. Exactly. Yep. Yep. It's just getting that mindset around it. Yes. Yes. Yep. Something you mentioned about a mindset in uh, your book, a couple things. One was the perfectionism pitfall. I really loved you mentioning that. Please tell us about that. Yeah, it's, it's so common and I've fallen into it myself, which is why I thought it was important to include. Yes. But mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll get this thought like, well, uh, you know, I didn't do a good workout today or I ate that ice cream Sunday when I really shouldn't have. Why even bother? And then you just kind of throw in the towel altogether and say, well, I didn't do this right, so just forget it. But the reality is everybody's going to make mistakes. You know, we're all human. Nobody's going to get it right all the time. And the more that you just really remind yourself of that, there's always going to be mistakes. It's never going to be like this perfect straight line. Um, and when you really just internalize that, then one mistake, it's just that. It's just one mistake that everyone's going to have. And you can still put one foot forward in front of the other. And then your next step will be more positive. So just like don't beat yourself up. Don't ruminate about it. Don't throw on the towel and say, yes. oh, just forget this health thing. You know, you can just get right back on the bandwagon and you can start doing good things in your next step forward. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like people get discouraged because, you know, I've sometimes been there and it, it's not a fun place and it, it's not even productive because it's not realistic. It's just nobody's going to get it right all the time. And we can easily get into what you refer to in the book as the comparison trap. Mm -hmm. Tell us yeah. about that. Yeah, it's it's also that's just another thing that sometimes our egos want to compare us to the next person. And oh, if I can't be as fit as that person, I'm no good. Or I that person just has the perfect diet and they dress so you know. When you start doing that, it it's a famous author Jen Sincero says that comparison is one of the biggest downers that you could ever have. And it's just the fastest way to disappointment. And Brene Brown says, I've had enough with comparisons because you have to celebrate yourself. Um, Dale Carnegie just says, you need to cultivate your own little garden and don't waste a second worrying that you're not like someone else. So all of these other famous authors, they've all said it, it can just be a trap. And we all have something special to offer. So we should focus on our own gifts and make the most of what we have. And then the world becomes a richer, better place the more that people celebrate their own talents and their own things that light them up. I love that. I love that because really, you know, our soft health and what we do every day and how we take care of our bodies, that's our own unique thing. Mm -hmm. And even if it's you know, one little moment or something we do and we feel good about it, you know, that can make your day. Yep, definitely. <laughs> For sure. Yes. And it's taking care of ourselves. And something in there that I absolutely loved was that you said we can, you know, we can think about, oh, I've got these bad habits or this or that, but we can replace a bad habit with a new improved habit. It's mm -hmm. something we can do. It's a goal we can have. It's something we can achieve. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. One example I give with that in diet is sometimes you could be in a habit, let's say, of having chips always with your sandwich, but sometimes that's really more that you want a little crunch to balance. And if you're looking to be healthier, there are some healthy things with the crunch. You could have some pickles on the side. You can have some baby carrot sticks that take like no time to prepare and neither do pickles because sometimes, oh, I don't want to cook something else. Well, those are fast and easy. Even something like kale chips. Yes. You might want to try them. They're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> you're getting some vitamins in that chip versus, you know, 
uh, the oily potato chip. So there are other options that you can, and then that could be your replacement. You have your sandwich with these other options instead of having your sandwich with the chips. Yes. So you can, you can find ways to sub in. Yes, yes. I was, I was just talking with a friend who kind of made a switch like that for herself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, something she was uh, eating every morning and she switched it to something else. And she is so, she, she's so happy about it and feeling so good about it. Yeah. It made me think, you know, when we do little things like that, we give ourselves that little gift, you know, the joy it gives us. Yeah. And the little things often go much farther than the big changes because research shows while sometimes we can make a big change, it's generally much, much harder for people, much harder. And small changes are easier to do. And then you gain that confidence, just like you said, once because you're successful in it. So the easier ones, they stick more and they're easier to do and they go a long way. A little bit goes a long way. Yes. So, and then, then once you've made that change, you feel more confidence and then you can make another little change. And then they have this really great cumulative benefit. Yes. So, so it's like taking small steps to go up the hill instead of just trying to jump it and run it, you know, take those steps and be good, be good and be fine with taking those steps. And my gosh, yep. how far we can go when we just take those small steps. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, you know, you mentioned the importance of walking, observing nature and our body language. All of those things tie into our soft health, don't they? Yeah. And your, your body language is as much for yourself as for someone else, because they've proven that if you stand taller and you put your chest out a little and your head is up, it affects your mood in a positive way. They call it like a power pose. Um, oh, Amy wow. on a TED talk and she talked about the power posing and when you stand tall and project a confidence, then it does seep into your mental state. Even if you weren't feeling confidence at first, when you stand tall and put your shoulders back and walk proud, you will start to feel more confident. And then you will also project that to other people. So it will elevate your mood if you just make your body into that more confident posture. And then if you're walking and observing nature, you're seeing beauty around you. And you can also kind of, it takes you out of, if you're ruminating about something, you're seeing the world is, is bigger and brighter than this thing that's bothering me. Like it's, yeah. it's bigger than that issue. And it, it takes you out of it a little bit, distances you from it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I had never thought of that, Cynthia, how our body language, I mean, I've always felt, you know, having a smile on your face or sharing a compliment, how that can affect others around you. But i would never thought about my posture and how I stand there. That yep. is a fantastic point. Yeah. For yourself and others. Yeah. Affects you yeah. and <laughs> is isn't it just so fantastic the little things that we can do that can make such a difference in our lives? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's like I said, the, the big changes they occasionally work, but more often it's the little things, which is encouraging because that you don't have to overhaul your whole life to make a difference. Yes. And also if you can do little things as a habit, that is super good. If you can make these little changes as daily habits, then you're, you're really going to take off. Um, there's another researcher, Wendy Wood, um, and she, she did a lot of studies on self-control. And what she found was that self-control really wasn't about willpower. The people who scored the highest in the self-control tests were actually just great habit makers and they made habits that synced with their goals. So once those habits were in place, it was just like automatic. Their default behavior was something healthy, was something good. And again, those habits didn't have to be major changes. It was like several little good habits. And then these people scored high in self-control because they were just automatically doing those positive things. They made it part of their life with those little changes. 
that's all it takes. So it's inspiring. You don't, you don't have to be a whole new person. You don't have to throw in the towel and start over <laughs> just little stuff, little stuff. And it's mm-hmm. so fantastic that with doing those little things, making those changes after a while, it's a habit and you don't even have to think about it. You're just exactly. doing it. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly what she says. And the brain It's fatigued if you have to make too many choices. It's like a fatiguing thing that happens. Um, And if they're automatic and default, then you have more energy freed up for other decisions and and play and leisure. And your your energy is just higher because you haven't had to think about every little thing. (laughs) Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. With all your years of experience in helping others and helping others be healthier, I just can't imagine how fulfilling and how wonderful that's been. I mean, that's to affect lives like that. That's so beautiful, Cynthia. It is. It's very rewarding. I love it. Um, Yeah. It's it's your passion, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah, I do. I, I love to give patient care. I do. And then writing became this additional little passion that that has inspired me a few different times. Uh, Once was an article for um, a chiropractic journal, just summarizing some of the research to this point. And my goal in writing that was just because I want various health professionals to work together to help patients. And sometimes there's myths about different professions and other professionals are like, what are chiropractors? Are they quacks? And I just wanted to gather a lot of stuff and say, look, this isn't quackery. This is research to check this out. Because like you mentioned earlier, all healthcare practitioners should be on like a wellness mission. We, we all want to help make the world a healthier place. So education is where it starts. Um, so that's why I wrote that. And then I like sci-fi and fantasy too. So I did write a novel about an alien in 2012. <laughs> it's like an alien several sub subplots and about Earth's destiny. <laughs> so I, I got that out of my system. And then, um, and then as I mentioned, uh, soft health, once I defined that that's, that's what I do, I'm not an extremist. Then suddenly all these other books started coming back into my memory and, and I put that together into soft health, uh, my handbook. Oh, I love it. Well, tell us the title of your sci-fi book. I, I'm oh, intrigued. Okay. The, the alien is named Stanlin. So it, his name is Stanlin. And then this first girl that he falls in love with, her name is Sylvia. So the book is called Stanlin and Sylvia. Oh, how fun. <laughs> I have to check it out. I have to check it out. It sounds so fun. It sounds so another, fun. Another crazy and, thing was yeah. that it has one of the sub stories in it regards this, this criminal mind and he tries to spread a pandemic. And this was in 2012 when I wrote it. And now we've had this pandemic, but there were precursors then. There was some kind of like avian flu going around and like a swine flu. So that kind of got the idea germinating. But then the, you know, a full blown pandemic hadn't happened and now it hasn't. I wrote it in 2012. So. Wow. Wow, yeah. isn't that amazing? How interesting. Yeah, um, I, I'm not psychic, but <laughs> there were those preliminary signs back then. So yes. yes. <laughs> and and I just loved something that your book has in common with my book, my Why Am I So Happy book, which I have to share with the audience because I'm super excited. My book, Why Am I So Happy, has been awarded the bronze medal in self-help books by the global (laughs) book association so oh i'm just i'm just thrilled to you know to have gotten that news but your book like my book so i think we're you know we're kind of we are so kind similar um in our wellness mission things in your book like little chapters or little bits you talk about it's like oh Yes, that is so me. That is so me. And, you know, so I have pages marked and I'm going to go back to those. Yes, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. And I kind of had that mindset with my book, different Uh chapters and topics. Someone can, oh, this topic. Yes, that's what I want to go back to that. And your book, it's so great that way. 
because it has such a variety of the topics that, you know, different things can reach out to an individual and they can like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting in that comparison trap. Oh, I'm going to go to Cynthia's book and I'm going to read about that and I'm going to get through that. Your book is so amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I had also um, hoped for that reference point, like you said, going back to it. I had thought of for topics like that, yes, but also for the exercises and stretches I had in there. Um, because at home, you may have most of your exercise outside of the home, but some days you can't go out, the car is acting mm -hmm. up or the weather is terrible. or So it's good to have a few go-to things just right in the house. So I made like a succinct little um, muscle challenging routine that is, is basic to start, but you can expand on it by doing more reps and sets or increasing the, the little dumbbells, whatever. You can do it as simple as you want or expand it out. And then there's um, a basic stretch too that hits all the major muscle groups and can relax the muscles without taking too much time, but it's, it's just a go-to thing. But if you forget it, it's your reference point. So I do wanna make those easy to turn back to, oh yeah, what were those stretches again? Or what were those exercises again? And you could go back. Um, and then some simple like at-home pain relief um, things that you could do, a simple neck stretch, a simple low back stretch, the proper icing procedure, because sometimes uh, people think more is better. And generally with ice, you really wanna have a 10 to 20 minute window, 15 on average being the general, just 15 minutes on and then 15 minutes or longer off. Again, if you do 10, it's okay. If you do 20, it's okay. But generally we try and stick with the 15 um, because if you leave it on too long, there's not enough blood flow for too, too long a stretch of time. If it's on in the therapeutic window, you get the anti-inflammatory benefit, but then the fresh blood recirculates again. So that's important. So little things like that, you know, I want to have yes. remind Andy. See, and that, oh, that is great reference. And I love that on the ice pack. I've had three neck surgeries, so I deal with neck pain sometimes. And so sometimes yeah. I ice it. But, yeah. And, the, and having the stretches in there, that's what's so great. It's like, well, I got a really busy day. I can't go to a gym or I can't go out. Oh, but gosh, okay, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to do some of Cynthia's stretches for a few minutes. It not only, you know, gives that little bit to our body, it's going to mm -hmm. make us feel good. That was mm -hmm. just so great yeah. to put those in there, Cynthia. Either or both. You could do the resistance exercises, the stretches, either or or both. Um, and then if you have your pedometer, you just get in more steps. And like we said, with the household chores, whatever, or if you're at work, take the stairs more. On your lunch break, try and take a little walk. There, you can sneak in those steps, park farther away. <laughs> yep. Things like that. Yep. And sneak them. All those little steps add up, don't they? They make oh, a difference for us. They do. And that is really a great thing. Really mm -hmm. a great thing. I love it. Well, yeah. um, I would love to have you share any website or information and how they can get your books um, and any last words of wisdom that you want to share with everybody today. Oh boy. Um, well, I guess I'll start with the information first. Um, my website is www.myname, which is Cynthia Hay, C Y N T H I A H E Y, and then D C for Doctor of Chiropractic, P C for Pro Professional Corporation. dot com. So Cynthia Hay, D C P C. dot com, um, and then there's one of those little square boxes at the top corner that if you click it, it's a menu bar. Um, and you can go to the publications to see any of the books. Cause then on that publications tab, there's a link for soft health. There's a link for Stanlin and Sylvia. There's a link for the research paper, which is just free. That's already on there if anyone oh, wants. It. So that links to everything. Um, and then just, I guess what I would say is just never give up because it's it's never too late for good health and anyone can do it. It's just a matter of taking those little steps. So don't get discouraged. And, oh, here's one other thing that comes to mind. We didn't touch on this, but in chapter three of motivation, 
There is a, um, a quiz by another author. Her name is Gretchen Rubin. And she did some studies on what she calls tendencies. And there's one very common, ten there's four tendencies overall, but one, the most common one is called the obliger tendency. And if you know yourself and you feel like if I don't have a trainer or I don't have a friend to work out with, I'm not going to go. That's the obliger tendency. Like they oblige the other person, but if it's up to them, they don't always do it. But if, if you know that that's you, or you can take her quiz and I, I, I'm, you could Google her or you could find it in my book. I have a link to her quiz. Um, but, it, but if you know that I may not do it myself, then that's really good information because then you can contact either that personal trainer or make a plan with that buddy and that's your workout buddy. You can also do it as a diet support group, joining a diet support group or having a diet buddy or having a nutrition coach. There are more health and nutrition coaches now than there ever used to be. Um, and for someone who knows they're an obliger, that is a perfect decision because it's going to help keep you on track. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like she said, that's actually the most common tendency is someone who needs that outer accountability source. And if that's you, just set it up. It's going to really make a difference in your life. So you're not alone if you feel that way and just go for it. And you'll see your health start to improve step by step. Oh, I love that. I love that. Oh my gosh, you <laughs> give such a great variety of information in this book. And, you know, you. you really are on a mission for to bring more wellness in the world. And you're doing it, Cynthia. This, this book is amazing. You are too, Paula. And I'm just <sighs> proud and glad to be in this with you and some other really positive thinkers out there who are trying to reach others and bring wellness in their own way. We each have to do our part. And if the world is, I, the way I think of it too, is if your baseline of health could be even just a little bit more than any other therapy that you get, whether it's mental or physical or anything, it will help you even more. So it's like, you've got a leg up. So if you can just increase your health baseline a little bit, than anything else you do to help yourself, you're going to benefit even more. And then that has a rippling effect to everyone around you. I so, love that. I love that. That is, you keep know, on. That is powerful, <laughs> but yet simple, isn't it? Yeah. What, yes, exactly. what that can do and what those little steps can do for us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I just want to celebrate with everyone today. Our, our, you know, our little steps, making a difference in our lives and supporting each other on yes. our, our wellness mission. What our a wellness. beautiful thing. Oh my gosh, you are a gift to us. And, and you are Paul. Oh, yes. thank you, honey. Thank you. We're a Great. team. And yes. all those team members out there listening and amazing audience i'm grateful for you and it is exciting and let's all enjoy those little steps and you know improve our lives and and improve our wellness we can all do it and we can all support each other i love it it's a team effort no no one usually can do anything alone in this world we all need each other <laughs> i love it i love it and i'm so happy to have all of you on my team. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Cynthia. And thank you everyone for joining us. And I will chat with you again next week. Everybody have a fantastic week and in, enjoy your soft health. Big hugs, love to everybody. Thank you.